The Stepping Out project was commissioned in April 2021 by Seed Sedgemoor as a response to the lockdowns in the UK. Informed by community consultation with guidance from professional artists, the aim was to give people affected by the isolation a creative outlet, achievable from their own homes, with the goal of producing a collaborative work at the end of the project. Community artist Rachel Gundry and poet Carl Bevis engaged with 20 participants from around Somerset over six weeks. As some contributors were more isolated than others during lockdown due to not being internet users, most of the artistic collaborations were conducted over the phone, with artworks, photographs or poems that they were inspired to create sent in via post. Well, it was Rachel who was my, who was my contact for it all and we had several hours um, conversation about various topics, it was quite varied. Made it very interesting because I never know what was going to be thrown at me. Sometimes you, you might spend the whole day not bothering going out, except especially with this Covid. Not to have that physical contact, to be able to sort of touch and hold people and let them know how much you care about them, I think that was quite difficult, that was the most difficult thing. I was brought up in a big family and we all looked after one another, um, so it's totally strange now. It just makes me feel isolated. Through those conversations, myself as a, as a word artist and Rachel as a visual artist, we've created artworks from those stories, and some of it's to do with people's aspirations, some of it's to do with looking back and, and thinking about some memories, um, a lot of it to do with place and, and where we find ourselves, and We've turned those into artworks, both in terms of uh, visual and words, which is now coming together. It can, it can keep me busy at times. It can, it can distract me and give me something to do, um, instead of just you know watching the television or taking a short walk around the, the you know the area. So I do like I like to learn things, and I like to think I've got a few skills. I don't. I'm not particularly artistic, I don't pretend that for one moment. Rachel is very supportive and if ever I was being uh, a bit negative she would say, no, 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 nonsense, you know, and she sort of really would boost you up, make you feel as if whatever you had done was worth doing, which is great. A niece who lives in Ireland is a good painter and she's got some paintings by her niece so she obviously really appreciates and loves these other people's artwork but doesn't really think that she can do it but she wants to have a go and she did two really beautiful little paintings for the, specifically for this project even though she doesn't think they're very beautiful they are beautiful when I said, I said to her, well, what is art? And so she said, well, it's whatever you, you see when you're looking at, at something. You might think it's very simple, but somebody else likes it. They find, they find it interesting. But I, I, I'm always very critical of my own efforts. In fact, I find that if I start doing a painting, an hour's gone in no time. It seemed to take an awful long time to get something just right. And then when it does, it's quite pleasing. Carl Bevis would ring me maybe once or twice a week. Um, it was quite nice because um, he'd come up with little ideas and then we would sort of have a little, a little break, maybe 20 minutes or half an hour, where we would both write something and then we would give each other feedback over the phone like that. So it's kind of inspiring each other really, which was, it was nice to have those little prompts. I think um, I'd taken a bit of a step back from writing while different things were going on. Um, and sort of you pick up a pen and sort of think, okay, I'm gonna do that and something else would get in the way. So it was nice to have another creative person to bounce sort of with different ideas that I hadn't thought of doing. So that sort of really helped me. As the lockdown restrictions eased, Rachel and Carl met up to sort through the work that their phone chats had inspired and discuss how best to display it. Through examining the things in life which can be quite challenging, we were able to look for the positives. And that in itself is actually quite an interesting um, aspect of how the project has panned out, that, that we are looking at kind of things we can look back on and laugh, things we can look back on and, and, and kind of go, yeah, that was actually 
that shaped me in some way. It's been really nice in the last couple of weeks because I've been able to meet up with Carl and a, a couple of the participants have been able to actually come in and be part of that process, which has been really good. Uh, hello, I'm Carl. Nice. <laughs> Hopefully you'll see a whole array of, of stories that people will connect with in different ways and, they, and that those participants feel able to, to share with friends and family. As a book, um, which we're, we're titling Mosaic. It was an absolute joy to meet some of you over the phone and talk about these things and then have the opportunity to be creative and, and write, and then indeed to write with you. And yeah, I just felt really privileged to be a part of that process. Yeah, well, I, I sort of feel the same way. It was very daunting to start off with. I found it quite touching that we'd all felt we were doing something together. Like people said, actually, you did feel conscious of, it, of being in a group, making something together. I am life's ears, though I do not see, yet the sound of space embodies me. I am the hum of night's silent plume, of the pylon's whoosh as he lights your room. I am the creak of the garden bench, of the hedgehog's pinch as he pours your fence. I am the tears of the willow tree, as the moon beams down, she comforts me. I am each seed in earth's planted breast, each bone I encumber as they're laid to rest. I have no name, yet I know all sound. They say silence is golden yet her voice is profound. When you're older and you're on your own, you're isolated. Although I've got this garden, I've got friends, I've got a network in myself, it's still a form of isolation. And to, to, to talk to somebody, it, it, it's good. I, th I think it's an excellent thing. Communication's important, I think. I always thought of my anniversary, maybe on, uh, on Valentine's Day, you had you bought a love spoon. To me, it was brilliant. It's, it's, it's a, it, if you want, there's an old man saying a declaration of love. That's the way you can express it. You know, it's, it's my way of expressing it, I suppose. And uh, they built up over time. And then they, Carol got them and then she put the, had a nice box for them. And I thought, no, they should be up there. And I, I, you look at them every day and you can smile. You can give chocolates, you can give flowers, you can eat the chocolates and the flowers die, but the love spoons last forever. Well, it's rather sentimental, isn't it? And it's, it's such a blessing, and I can't thank you all enough um, to be part of that anyway. It's it, it, an absolute honour to sort of have a go at doing something and having it put into into sort of a book form, it's, it's lovely. It made the whole project worthwhile and you hope someone's going to get something out of this. I did, I did. That looks rather nice. I say it myself, <laughs> I shouldn't. I've had the experience of um, reading back a, po a poem that I've written based on somebody's words and they've cried down the phone. Not because it's actually upset them, but because they've said in as many words, you know, it's, just, it's lovely to know that I've been listened to. That through my poem, quoting back at them some of their own words, they can tell I was listening. And I know Rachel's done exactly the same thing. Um, and that moment of recognition is gonna happen again when it's, they see it in, in print and they can put it on the bookshelf and get it out when somebody comes to tea and say, look, this is me. I think that's a good thing. Thank you.